Hey everyone, welcome back to my home studio. So this is my 43rd, I think, video uh, that I've been doing as the quarantine distraction videos um, since we've been closed out of school. Um, I've had kind of a little bit of a break. I haven't done a whole lot in the past couple of weeks because school has been super intense trying to clean out my room and you know do the final grading and it's it's been a little crazy so um i'll, I'll try to post what i can in the next few weeks i don't know how much i'll be able to get to it with the end of the school year and uh, all that but anyway this video is a continuation of one that i had started earlier in the week um, i ended up by making it a two-part video because the first part i found i just had way too much information that one was on prep prepping my bisqueware in order to do a glaze firing. And I, so then I separated it. And now this particular one, this is about prepping my kiln and loading all of that glazed ware and firing the, uh, the glaze load. So hopefully you find this uh, somewhat informative. I am using, my personal kiln is a Scut 1018 with three inch brick. It's, um, it's got the, the Kiln Master, the computerized control panel. You can um, look at my previous video, my bisque firing video, when I talk a little bit about how to work a manual kiln with like a junior um, uh, cone uh, sitter and everything. Um, this one I just have computerized. So hopefully it will answer some questions. I go into details about um, you know, a lot of different prep that I do. The clay bodies that I'm using this are Laguna B mix with grog and without grog. And I also use coyote glazes. And I have one of the Laguna um, Moroccan sand glazes in that uh, as well. So uh, hopefully you find this informative. Drop me any comments or questions uh, below and check out the video description. I have a Google Doc with links of, you know, my recommended uh, favorite tools and stuff like that. Um, so I hope you all stay safe, stay healthy, and keep potting if you can. Preparation of your kiln shelves with a glaze firing is essential. First of all, kiln wash is used to protect the kiln shelves. Now. The first thing that I want to do is scrape off any loose or flaky kiln wash. I'm using a, an abrasive scraper. It's sold in the masonry department, like with bricks and everything in uh, home improvement stores. After I've scraped it, then I sponge it. I'm really trying to keep down the dust, so I'm sponging it directly into my trash can. And then after it's been scraped, it's been sponged, then I apply a very thin layer of kiln wash. The idea is you want the layers to be thin so it doesn't flake off. Um, if kiln wash is flaking off when you glaze fire, it could actually go airborne and float around the kiln and you could have pieces of kiln wash that land on your items. You only kiln wash one side of the shelves. So the back side never is kiln washed. You would not want to do that because it would fall off and get on your pieces underneath. Same thing again, I am just scrubbing off the kiln wash, or scraping, I should say, with the uh, abrasive stone scrubber th thing. I wish I knew what that was called. Sponging it, and then again, I will apply a thin, thin layer. It is thin like cream. You never want it to be very thick. It should go on very thin. You're seeing through it. You can put on, you know, two or three layers. Let each layer dry between each one. My kiln wash is purple because I blend two different kiln washes together. I use a regular ceramic kiln wash and then I use a kiln wash that's used for like glass fusing. I like it because it's very fine and it chips a little bit less than regular kiln wash I find. Okay. Um, I wanted to give you a close-up of the cone pack so you could understand. Um, I put the, the light on here so you could hopefully see this. Hopefully you can see that the bluish one there is cone 5, the middle one is cone 6, and the one on the right is cone 7. Now, the cone pack, you can make your own packs, but I happen to have some of these cone holders, so I'm just using that. But the um, cone pack is designed to hold the cones at... Uh, a particular angle so when it gets up to temperature that cone will begin to bend and fall. Now my target cone is going to be cone 6 uh, because I'm using coyote glazes which are cone 6 and I'm actually firing at cone 5 with about a 25 minute hold. So. 
Now, on each shelf of the kiln, I have placed a cone pack, so you can see it there. When it falls, the cones should be falling in that direction. They uh, shouldn't be falling sideways or anything because they seem to be properly aligned. And I, uh, I have a cone pack on each of the shelves, and now I'm ready to cover up my shelves. Uh, but before I do, let me just show you the configuration of the posts. So I'm using half shelves and each half shelf has three posts, but you can see that I have the posts um, in common for the, uh, the ones here on the corner. So they are sharing uh, a post. So I have a total of four posts. Um, if I were using a full shelf, a round full shelf, I would just be using three posts as well. As I'm loading my glaze kiln, I wanna show you that I have patties or cookies underneath my uh, glazed pieces. So let's talk about the purpose of a patty or a cookie. So I just bisque fire um, little slabs of clay and um, in my home studio I will often kiln wash them so like these sitting up here I've been kiln washing them with a couple of coats of kiln wash before I actually put them in the kiln and of course they'll be dry before I fire it. Um, if I am firing student work, I will often make have the kids make patties, and I have a few videos about that, but I'll have the kids make patties really, really thin, actually thinner than what I have here. I have them make patties thin like a tortilla, and then we just load their pieces on their wet patties, and as long as the wet patty dries out before we fire, it's okay. So the purpose of the patty is if the glaze should run, especially like where the handle is, if the glaze will run, it should run and stick to the patty rather than sticking to the kiln shelf. Now, if you look at my kiln wash and you're like, what the heck, that's purple. Yes, I have a purple kiln wash. I use a combination of a kiln wash that's made for glass firing and a combination of one that's just made for ceramic firing um, because I like the fine milled quality of the one that's used for glass. So I kind of combine the two. And you apply it super thin because you don't want it to flake off in chunks because if it flakes off, it can float around your kiln and get stuck to pieces. So as I load these, I'm just resting them on patties, making sure that your pieces are at least a quarter of an inch apart. Don't put them too close together handles quite often I will place toward the inside. I haven't necessarily done that yet because I'm waiting to get my pieces in there before I uh, arrange all the handles, but um, make sure that they're not too close because if a glazed piece touches another glazed piece and they kiss, they will end up by getting stuck. Okay, and I'm just going to set these last two shelves on the very top. And just like with some of the lower shelves, I am setting patties underneath the pieces that I'm firing. And I can, I don't know if I've mentioned it, but I, I do save my patties and refire them. So like this one has glaze on it, but when I put my item on it, I make sure that I don't put it on the glaze part. And do not set a patty upside down if it's dirty, because glaze on the bottom will stick to your shelf. Now the last item, I'm just gonna test because I don't even know if I'll be able to shut. No, it's just a little bit too high. So unfortunately, I cannot get this one in. If I wanted to take a little bit more time, I could have done some uh, small pieces, but I wanna go ahead and get this kiln fired. If you saw my uh, video that I showed on firing the bisque kiln, of course I use the vent hood in the same manner. I will turn that on in a minute after I'm done recording here. All right, so just like when I fired the bisque kiln, I'm going to be documenting my log of firing with today's date. 
So I'm firing to cone five, even though it's a cone six glaze, I'm doing what Coyote recommends and I'm doing a 25 minute hold time. Um, I'm firing on medium, so I have different choices here with my uh, scut. I have the cone fire mode programs over here. I'm gonna fire on medium, quite simply because I don't have anything really large that I'm concerned about, perhaps warping. Um, so medium should be good with that. Um, I like, I prefer to do it on medium. I don't like to go with fast with my glaze firing because um, I have had some maybe pinholing that I, I don't want. I wanna make sure that all the gases have a chance to escape. Um, so let's talk about what, what you see on the, the panel right now. Of course, I have a computerized scut. If you look at my bisque, firing, um, how to fire a bisque, bisque kiln, I do go a little bit over a manual kiln with a cone sitter. Um, I'm not doing that today though because I'm at home and I don't have a manual kiln with a kiln sitter at home. I just have my computerized one. So right now my readout is saying that the last firing completed in 10 hours and 48 minutes and it's telling me that it's 68 degrees down here. Now, it's, I think it's uh, usually just a couple degrees warmer than that. Um, it's there's something about the way that they calculate. I think it calculates it just a little bit cooler. So to clear this, the first thing that I'm going to do is hit enter. Okay, that clears it and it, you can see it goes to idle and it tells me the temperature. Now, I'm going to hit cone fire and I'm not preheating this because I don't have anything that is wet. Now, if I had just made fresh patties that were thin like a tortilla, I would probably try to dry them out throughout the day before I actually fired, but if they were uh, thin, tortilla thin patties, and they were wet, I could dry it out for maybe three hours or so to, just to make sure those patties were dry. Not necessary for me though right now. So I'm gonna hit enter because I don't wanna preheat at zero. Now it's asking me what cone and I'm going to fire to cone five and then I hit enter. My speed, as I said, I'm going to put it on medium, which it already is and I hit enter. And my hold, this is my hold temperature. When it gets to the fin final temperature, it's gonna hold for 25 minutes, which is what I want for my coyote glaze. And then I'm gonna hit start. Now you're gonna hit hear the relay kick on. When that relay kicks on, that's indicating that it's sending electric to your little elements and it's gonna start heating. Now, early in the firing, it clicks on and off a little bit more slowly, but as it gets toward the end of the firing, they click on and they will often stay on at toward the end of the firing because it's really trying to bring it up, bring it up to temperature. Now, my kiln, because it has an overhead vent, I do leave one peephole. My top peephole is unplugged. Now, when I had an undermount vent before, um, I would have all of those plugged. But um, I, since I don't use an undermount vent anymore, I leave one unplugged. That way, the hood is going to take out the fumes. Now, you do want to, of course, make sure that you don't have anything flammable right around your thing. Don't have anything leaning against it or sitting on top of it. I'm going to go ahead and turn my kiln on. Now, I am firing this during the day. I am home. So I'm going to be coming down here and I'm going to be checking this from time to time and monitoring this and making sure that everything looks okay. All right. So my kiln completed its firing and it's cooled down to a hundred and what is that 53 degrees. I can go ahead and put up my fan. I can go ahead and open it. And when I can start to touch them and unload them with my bare hands, then I feel like they're ready to unload. So here are some of my pieces. This is how the the one that was the steel gray chino with the antique jade over it came out. Um, I really like the combination of using that steel gray chino underneath a, a lighter color. 
This is the Coyote Croc Blue. It's kind of a, I think it looks like denim. And these are my little bowls for our hedgehog. Now, these are the patties that I had uh, kiln wash on them. And when, uh, before they were fired, you saw that they were purple because my kiln wash is purple prior to firing. These were older patties that were already used. And um, these are still in uh, very good shape. I'm going to reuse these multiple times. And I can keep kiln washing them too. Uh, if I feel that the kiln wash has absorbed or something, I can add a little bit more. the result of the cone pack. So the cone in the middle, the one that is just barely touching with the tip, this one, that is my target cone. Uh, this is cone seven, which is still upright and everything looks just right with this firing. So it has fired to cone six. At least on that shelf of the kiln. Check out this one. That is my citrus juicer. It had, let's see, it had steel gray chino, antique jade, and on the rim, I put gunmetal. I love that combination. And the texture is still very nice and sharp, so that will be great for still using uh, for citrus juicing. Okay, and here is my cone pack from the very bottom, and the cone six has completely fallen, and it looks like it's actually hitting the cone five, and the cone seven is still up. This looks perfect again. I'm very pleased with the uh, firing of this kiln load. Everything looks really good. Now, one thing I will mention is it always helps to have an even kiln load. If you are trying to fire something, you only have like one or two items and you have a lot of empty space, it is not gonna fire evenly. So I try to fill my kiln and have it evenly distributed every time I fire. Before I end, I wanted to add three more things that I realized that maybe I kind of left out. Number one, um, you don't have to use the cone pack that I used. I used a pre-made cone pack. I was gifted a bunch of them years ago. They're raw clay. Um, they haven't been bisque fired yet and when you put the cones in it will hold them. You can make your own cone packs easily from the clay body that you're uh, firing by again you always put the the hottest firing cone on the far side because you want that to be the last one to fall. Your target cone is going to be in the middle and when you put these, put these down, you can see they have a slight angle to them. Uh, when it sits flat, like on a surface, it has a slight angle. So you keep it at that exact same angle when you insert them in there. And it just holds them. Now, the key, most important thing is make sure that that cone pack is dry before you fire it. If you put in a, a moist cone pack, it's going to blow up. So just make sure that, you know, make it a day or two in advance. Um, again, not overly thick, and then you should be good. Another thing that I wanted to mention was if you have round shelves that you're loading in your kiln, I still use three posts. Three posts will prevent rocking. If you ever do four, you might get a little bit of rocking. So I just position the three underneath support and always put post over post. So you have a shelf, put a post over post. I don't put posts like unsupported in the middle of a shelf. And then the third thing I wanted to mention is um, the kiln wash. Again, I had mentioned that it protects your shelves. 
Um, so I kiln wash the shelves to protect them so if there's a glaze drip or if there's what I refer to as vapor glazing. Sometimes when you glaze fire a piece, just the proximity right around the base of your piece, especially if you have glaze underneath. So like, let's say on this one where I have glazed on the interior of the foot, you could get a little bit of vapor glazing there. The kiln wash on uh, your shelf and especially on your patty will help protect it. If you fire something like this on a patty, you might end up by seeing a ring, just where the vapor has kind of given it a little bit of a seal. So again, I like to do the kiln wash to help protect my shelves. I have a lot less cleaning. And the patties, by the way, the patties were like a game changer for me as a ceramics teacher. When I first started teaching, I never knew about patties. And oh my gosh, the hours that I had to spend grinding off children's glazed um, mistakes that they had. It was terrible. Once I had the kids start making tortilla thin patties, you know, about uh, three quarters of an inch of bigger uh, than their piece, game changer. It's very rare that I have glazed drips on my shelves now, um, even when they're careless. Or if, if I do suspect it might go bad, I put extra patties underneath it to be on the safe side. So hopefully those clarifications helped a little bit. Um, I will put some links in the video description of like the kiln wash that I use, but you can find kiln wash anywhere. I just happen to use a blend that I like, but you can use, you know, whatever works for you. And a lot of people make their own as well. I just buy the pre-made stuff because I don't have time to make it. So I hope you stay safe, stay healthy, and keep potting if you can.